Hello, this is Amy with Amy Astro. Thank you for watching my videos. If you like this video, please subscribe below and select the alert bell so you know when I upload new Astro videos. Like and share with your Astro friends and you can find me on Facebook as Amy Astro where I share my Astro related adventures. Welcome back to the conclusion of our Crab Nebula edit. We are going to finish this photo off with Lightroom and Photoshop. We really don't have to do a whole lot, but I'm going to show you a few things here with this image blown up that bother me and that I'm going to work on. I see a lot of graininess in here on the Crab Nebula and I would like to smooth that out. My background looks pretty good, except around some of these stars, I have some strange pixelation. So I'm probably going to blur around some of these stars just to soften up those odd edges. And really, there's not a whole lot to do. We might add some brightness and some contrast. I might saturate some of these colors just a little bit. But overall, straight out of PixInsight, this image is not that bad. But let's see if we can add a little bit of pop to it. So I am over here in Lightroom and I have already imported this image here and let's fit it to my screen and we're going to go over here to the develop tab in Lightroom and the first thing and I'm going to play with these settings a lot I, I move them around until I find something that just makes me happy let's see what happens if I raise the exposure just a touch I just I like what it's doing inside the nebula what does contrast give me? Oh, contrast is pretty cool too. Let's bump that up a little bit. Highlights, that blows that out. But you know what, if I dropped it down some, I get more detail in there. Let's do that as a selective setting. And shadows, what does that do for me? I just slide everything back and forth and I see if something catches my eye. And to get it back to zero, you double click on the label. We can take white and brighten it up if we want, but you can really see that graininess pop out. So I might just give it just a touch. And then we have black. If we pull it down, we make everything darker around us. That's kind of cool, but it looks like it added some noise and speckling to our background. So we want to be real careful with that. And I'm going to, let's say I'm going to slide it around about there. We've got vibrance. If we move it, it really makes that pop out. It kind of looks like a Halloween eye or something. But maybe just a little bit might be good. And if you use the slash key, you can toggle between before and after and see if any of the sliders that you just played with, did they help or did they hurt? And if you find something that's displeasing, just go back and figure out which slider hurt things. All right, so here is our after right now. Saturation. Do I want to take up saturation on everything? That's kind of overkill. I could take up just a little bit, but I'm not going to do a whole lot. Let's do a before and after. All right, let's minimize the basic tab just a bit. And you've got tone curves, which is just like the curves that we used back in PixInsight. You can click on the line and you can drag up the brightness and then you click down here and you drag down the darkness. And that's something that you can play with and see if you like what you see or if you did it too much. Alright, and this right here will turn that setting off and on so you can determine which area it did. So does this make us happy? or having it off. Does that make us happy? I kind of like that. Oops. Open it back up. But I think I'm going to do just a little bit less. So I'm going to scooch him down just a little bit more. Scooch is a very highly technical term. All right. So we are there. Tone curve. Now this is where we can choose our colors that we want to play with. And we can change the hue of things, the saturation, or the luminance. And this stretches everything out, or we could do it in one swoop if we knew the color that we were going to play with. So let's see, let's try here with all of them out. 
Now I can take the red and change it a slight color just by sliding it around. And let's see, what was it before? It was kind of an orangey color down there, if you can see. And I can make a more yellow, or I can make a more red. I don't know if it really that much matters. We've got orange, that turned that really red, and that turned that really yellow. So let's just leave that one be. If we played with the yellow in all of this, look at the edges, how they change. So I don't want to lose the yellow by going down low. See how they just kind of, I guess it's got to keep up with me. I'm just going to leave that at the beginning. Now green, and this is changing the hue of it. We're not messing with saturation yet. This is to decide if we want a slightly different color. And keep in mind, every time you edit these images, you will never get the same image twice, no matter how hard you try. But that's okay. That's what the fun of all of this is. All right. I guess I'll leave the aqua there. Let's look at the saturation. What do we want? Do we want to saturate that red a little bit? That really pops it up. Let's go subtle. Orange. That's really popping. Let's go subtle there. Yellow, nah. Green. Let's pop it up a little bit. All right, and we've got aqua. Do we have aqua? Oh yeah, you can watch there in the center is trying to change some. And blue, how does blue affect? See, if you oversaturate something, look at how blotchy it starts to get. Let's see if we can, let's blow this up just so you can even get a better picture of what these saturations do. You gotta be careful, because you don't wanna grab just these single dots. I mean, it looks like somebody threw a paintbrush at it and it just splattered. So let's do that. Now, I'm going to turn that section off, turn it on. I guess everything I've done is really not noticeable. So I haven't done anything crazy yet. That's always a good start. Now, luminance will affect the dark and the light of a color. So let's play with the red. If we take it darker, you see down there in the bottom, everything gets darker. And if we take it towards the light side, everything gets brighter. And that's not so bad, but let's not overkill it. And orange, we want to make orange dark, see it looks kind of grungy right there. Or we can make it light, but either way, you don't want to get carried away. If we start isolating these colors, they'll lose their softness and they won't bleed together very well. Let's see, aqua. See, that made that brighter, that made it darker. Uh, and this is all completely personal preference. You have to slide these around to determine what works for your image. And no image is alike. Oh, look, I got a little bit of purple in there. That's kind of cool. Let's bring that out. And uh, magenta. Okay. Let's go back up here and turn all that off. Really, it looks like I affected this orange section more than anything. I would kind of like to make this go into an aqua direction if I can. So what does this button do for me? Look at that. Because I clicked on a blue and aqua section of the drawing, it is sliding those sliders for me. Now that's really neat. So if I have this hue option here, and if I clicked right here, look at that, it grabs the red and the orange, and they move together. It's very intuitive of what it is wanting to do. So let's grab over here at the green, and let's see what two colors it grabs for me here. The green, it grabs more green and a little bit aqua. So I can change the hue of that, or I can bump it down. So, you know, let's just go crazy because crazy is what we do sometimes. Let's hit the radio button here for saturation. Grab the green. We can desaturate it, see? Or we can increase saturation. Uh, let's turn all of it off and on and see how crazy I just got. 
did I help it? There's before and there's after. Before and after. I'm not too sure I really helped it a whole lot. So let's take down, let's put the green back to where he was and I don't want to desaturate my aqua. And let's look again. I do like that being more of the aqua flavored. So I'm going to shrink down this little menu. Now we do have an option here to sharpen things and built into Lightroom are these presets. And you can sharpen like scenic, but look what we just did. If you sharpen, sometimes you introduce noise and that's not a good thing. So I am going to turn off the sharpen. But what I do like is this noise reduction section. Watch as I slide this up. It will turn things into butter. But it left me some blotchy and I bet you that blotchy is from me playing with the colors. And I never really want to go that high with it. I'm going to just take the edge off of it. Let's see, let's turn that off. Did we help anything? Not enough that I can see. Let's deal with some color noise. All right, let's turn that off. Let's turn it on. See, now when I do this, I can lose some detail, but detail is not noise. I want to see sharper lines in all of this. Okay, let's zoom back out and let's toggle between before and after. Did I improve this or did I mess it up? Well, it's all personal preference, so it's not too bad to me. I'm going to leave it right there for right now. And then we've also got this effects tab. And in the effects tab, you can use something that's called dehaze. But you see how it kind of crunches it up there and changes it? I think I'm going to do that in just a couple pieces. And then you've got vignettes. If you like a vignette on your photo, I generally like, I like vignettes. You just feather it up so it's not quite obvious. But what that does is it, oops, I wanted the amount. It darkens my corners up and it helps draw my attention into my subject. Let's turn it off. Let's turn it on. It's very subtle, okay. Off and on. And it just kind of draws my eyes in some. So let's close that down. Okay, let's go up here. And this is where I can choose what I want to adjust. It's called the adjustment brush. And I'm gonna select it. And these are all my choices. And if you double click on these, they return to zero. So I have everything set up at zero, and I have this monster brush. If I use the square brackets, open and close, I can make this bigger or smaller. And I'm going to zoom in some so I can see what's going on. Now, what would I like to play with? I think I would like to play with the dehaze. It looked kind of cool when I did it. Now, no matter what I set it at right now, we can always change that after. And I am just going to paint inside. And let's look at this brush. The brush size is number 11. And there we go. Okay, I have a very large feathered edge. You can tell that by the outer circle. And my flow is about 46. So it's kind of at 50% spitting at my image. It's not gonna go overly heavy handed. So I'm gonna paint around here and let's show our mask so you can see where I'm painting. Let's make this bigger. Now keep in mind if I paint over this red line again it will get darker. So let's just try to go gentle. And I'm just going to paint around. And let's turn this mask off so we don't see it. And now let's play with our dehaze. See if we like what we see. Dehaze is great for removing fog and landscape photography, just to add some crispness to things. All right, let's look at before and there's after. Before and after. I kind of like that. 
So if I want to do a new brush, I come over here and let's do a fresh brush. And let's make this smaller and let's increase our contrast just a little bit. And I'll just brush in a few spots of where I would like it darker and maybe see a better line. And this is personal preference and you don't really see things until you start turning off things. Let's look at our mask to see where we're painting. You see I'm really not painting very far. But I'm just going to grab a couple of these little dark spots to emphasize. And if you don't like it, it's called undo. All right, let's turn that off. Okay. Now let's let's do a before and after. Before and after. All right, which radio button is this guy? That's that cloud. That's that cloud. Now I believe if we right mouse click on those buttons, we didn't like what we just did, we can hit delete or we can reset the brush and start over from scratch. What I was looking for was a toggle button to off and on. Let's try this one. There we go, off and on. And this is just that little contrast that we just did. So there's on. Did I help it? I think I improved it just a little bit. And let's call that good. Let's hit close. I'm going to zoom out. And let's go to before and after. Before and after. Not that bad. And this is where I would leave it in Lightroom. And from here, I will continue on in Photoshop. And to get to Photoshop from Lightroom is you find the image that you're working on down here and you right mouse click and you go edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now I'm making the assumption here, which is not always a good thing. If you have Photoshop, you have Lightroom. I could have done all of this in Photoshop, but it would have taken me twice as long to do. These two programs work well as a team. So the question here is I want to edit a copy with my Lightroom adjustments. Yes, I do. So let's click edit and it is going to open up Photoshop for me which is on my other screen, if I can grab it. It is thinking. Come on, wake up. All right, let's drag it over here. And it opened my image for me. And here we go. So what is bothering me here? What is bothering me is some of this graininess. And the best way to get rid of that really is just to blur it some. Now I am going to grab this layer and drag it down here, which is create a copy of the layer. And there's a copy, it's identical. And I am gonna go up here to filter, blur, and add a Gaussian blur. And don't worry, when I do these things to the whole image right now, I'm not really doing it to the whole image. But I've noticed if I just blur it by one pixel, let's undo the preview, that helps a lot. Yeah, it's amazing what one pixel of blur will do for you. So let's say OK. And we'll turn that layer off and on. And really it didn't hurt the rest of it too much, but I, I'm not going to mess with the entire image. So what I do now is I come down here and I add a layer mask. The layer mask automatically fills with white. And if I would like to change my layer mask to black so I don't see anything, the easiest way to do that is hold down the shift key on your keyboard and hit backspace if you're on a PC or delete if you're on a Mac. And I want to fill with black and say OK. Now everything I just did just went away. It's hidden by a sheet of paper. So now we want to reveal some of that blur back, but we only want it selectively. So grab yourself a paintbrush. All right, notice my paintbrush is rather large here. I am painting with white, and my opacity right now is at 38%. I 
don't want to go too crazy quite yet. So let's just paint over a little gently over where we would like to see the blur. And just like in Lightroom, the square bracket open and close will make the brush larger and smaller. And see, just right through here is what really bothers me. Let's zoom back in some. I use that slider over there. And this will help mush those colors back together that you may have accidentally separated back when we were playing with our saturations. All right, let's look at before and after. There's before and after. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the blur up in here. But notice I'm not blurring any of my stars. I am only blurring here in my nebulosity. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna keep it. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna keep it. And let's just flatten this image for right now. It makes things easier because these images get very large very fast. So I hit this little, um, I'll show you again, these little lines over here, little radio type button. And I clicked on it and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna flatten my image. So there's my image right there. And let's see, the next thing I wanna do I'm going to add some contrast and some brightness to it. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer and I'm down here with the half circle that's shaded and not shaded and let's choose uh, brightness contrast. Now what I'm going to do here is going to look like it's way too much but that's okay. Just watch and, and you'll see. Let's slide the contrast up and look at what it does to the image but it adds some really cool factors to it. Trust me, I'm not leaving my image looking like this. Let's go back to the layers. And it automatically came with a mask on it. So once again, let's hold down the Shift, Backspace, or Shift, Delete. And we're going to fill this layer with black. And we will come back with our white paintbrush at a 38% opacity. And where do we want to see our contrast? We are just going to paint it in. You can see where my lines are showing up. I want to emphasize all of these veins in here. So if you're a realist, you may want to stop right now because I'm more of an artist. And if it makes me happy, life is good. So this is all personal taste. And you can spend hours on this if you really want to. I'm just going to dash through this pretty quickly, or as quickly as I know how, and show you the ideas of what you can do. And then you just play with it and use it on your image. All right, so let's turn that off. Now let's turn it back on. Did I help it or I hurt it? it? Looks like I added some holes in here, which was kind of cool. I want to add some more shape around in here. Remember, I'm just doing this at a 38% opacity. And once I get done with this, if I feel like I've gone overboard, I drop the opacity of the layer that I'm working on. Not a big deal at all. All right, let's see, a little bit over here. You know, pretend you're Bob Ross. We are painting happy little stars. Let's turn this off and turn this on. That makes me happy, but look, if I overdid it, I just turn my opacity down and I can go gentle. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right, that looks good. Let's add another adjustment layer down here. Uh, it's another, um, we're gonna use brighten. And instead of changing the contrast, let's brighten it up some. All right, and remember I go carried away, layers, and I click on the, the mask and do your shift backspace or shift delete and fill it with black once again and it disappears. And use your square bracket to make it larger or smaller. And let's paint in where we want some of the bright to just pop out ever so slightly. And that just gives it a little bit more definition now if I found that I drew this as a harsh line and I didn't like it, I can repaint over it with black and it will disappear. It's like an eraser. 
or if I kind of liked what I did but wish it was a little softer, I can always add a blur to the mask. Okay, let's turn this off and on. Did we add or subtract? It's really kind of hard to tell, but watch this. If I double click on this mask, another window opens. And I'm not sure why, but my preview is not working so hot lately. But let's say I'm going to feather it, let's say about two pixels. And we'll smooth it out by 27. And we'll say OK. And all this is doing is softening my mask. So it's just a little bit softer. And that's good. But let's drop the opacity just a little bit so we don't get too carried away. OK. What other choices do we have down here? We can change the vibrance some. We can change the hue and saturation again. Let's see what vibrance will do for me now. Does it make, do anything that makes me happy? I don't see a whole lot of positive changes. Or I am probably stressing my computer right now. Let's just put it there for right now. Let's see, let's turn it off, turn it on. I didn't see anything, so let's just trash this guy. Drag him down to the trash can and get rid of him. Now the other thing that was bothering me on these images is if I come back, let's find one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm dragging my box over. Come on. Yep, definitely stressing the computer out. All right, look at this blue star here. He's kind of pixelated on the edges. So let's fix that. Let's start with over here in this little tab, let's duplicate. We want a layer. We want to stamp our layer, which is I want a copy of everything from here down. So that's going to be, let's see, which one of these options do I want? I know my shortcut key, but I'm trying to show you another way. Blend, create, merge visible. I don't want to do any of that. OK, you are going to have to live with my shortcut keys. You ready for this one? Create yourself a new layer. Shift alternate command E. And that created an identical copy of everything that's all the way down. And from here, I am going to use the blur tool right here. Looks like a teardrop. And my blur is on 100% strength. And as I click and hold, I am just smudging those edges where it looks suddenly pixelated and it bothers me. So you kind of just go systematically through here. You drag this box until you see one that bothers you. And we just give it a little blur motion. There's one. And I'll take time and I'll look at every one of these stars and just make sure the edges don't look funny. I was hoping to show you an action set that I use on some images for this one. But for this particular image, I don't have a need for that action set. So I think we're going to save it for another video. But I will include a link below for you to go take a look at it and uh, see what it's all about. There's a whole bunch of tutorials out on how to use the action set. And it does things like selecting your larger stars and helping you make them smaller. It helps you take those. Um, really crunchy. They call it uh, crunchy. It takes the crunchy sharp ch stars and will help you soften the edges. And that one's really cool. But if you pop over to uh, Backyard Astronomy with uh, Trevor Jones, he uses those action set. In fact, he's the one that recommended it to me. And I ended up purchasing it. It was around $20. It wasn't crazy expensive when you consider everything else we buy for this art. So, okay, let's see. And I'll, you know, I take time and I literally, I go through every one of these stars. You should get the idea of what I like to do. And it's just smoothing these out. And if I hit a control zero, I will completely zoom out. And let's go back to our original image. I'm going to hold down the alternate key and click my background. That's before and this is after. 
That looks pretty good. But we definitely need to blur that one. He sticks out like a sore thumb. Let's zoom in some more. And let's look at before, holding down the alternate key. And after. I think that looks pretty good. So Command zero to zoom all the way out. And this is how I would finish off my image. Now for those of you who have um, logos and stuff, you come to the file tab and you go to place embedded and you go find your logos and you go grab one and you say place it and it will come in like this and we just grab the corner shrink it down to whatever size makes you happy we will grab it let's move it over here you can rotate it some if you like and you hit the check mark to place it and you can change the opacity of it some if you don't want it to be glaring at you and that is my finished image i will save this and share it onto facebook with everyone and that's it this is all for right now i do appreciate your time if you like the series please take a moment and subscribe leave me a comment with suggestions of what else you would like to learn and i will add them to my list and we will try to make a video just for you uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, this is Amy with Amy Astro, and I am wishing you clear skies.